Hello, hello, sisters. We are back for a very, very, very special episode because I have Mike Goldstein in the house. Mike, I am so thrilled to have you back. How are you? I am amazing and so excited to be with you. If you are a single woman and you have been living under a rock, you may not know him. <laughs> but if you are in life and looking and searching and wanting to have the best friggin' dating advice on the planet, this is one of the men that has helped me learn my skills. You got the dating coach of the century with us. How about that for an intro, Mike? <laughs> Wow. That, that Gotta, was very generous. Thank you. <laughs> well, you're going to have to live up to that now. No, just kidding. You you are in for a treat, ladies. Um, he's been featured on the Today Show, New York Post, Reader's Digest, Shape Magazine. It's been teaching dating strategies for over a decade through his exclusive one-on-one -on -one coaching and social media presence with 400,000 followers. This is the dude, man. Mike is a Jersey boy. That's how I met him when he was living out here, but California pulled you in. Um, and he's also a lifelong soccer player. I didn't know that. And now he lives in California, as I said. So anyway, you're not here to find out about his, his soccer or the fact that I met him in Jersey. You want to know what he's got to offer you today. And we are going to be talking about, I don't know, when a guy is a good guy. Like how the friggin' like, how do you know that there are some key things to look for? And let's just dive right in, Mike. What are some of the things like, how do you know when a guy is a good guy? Because everyone's looking for a good guy. Yeah, Junie. So I've been doing this for a decade. And I work with women one on one. And I think the number one thing that drives me nuts is when they start dating a man that either has the wrong intentions or just basically ends up dumping them or is manipulating them or whatever malpractice they have, it just drives me nuts. Like, I feel like as a man, like I have this huge protective sense. So anytime a client got hurt by a man rejecting them or a man dumping them, it just like broke me to pieces. So I like analyze this for a decade and I'm like, how do we know if he's a good guy? How do I prevent women from getting hurt? And I realized that men could trick us. No matter how good I got at this, men could trick us. So I was like, well, what could I build that if you were deaf, dumb, blind, how do we know that we're gonna get treated well and I came up with a very simple math solution to this that wow. women can implement. Okay. Um, so all it is, is making a man go through a process. And what it looks like is somewhere between six and 10 dates and how we implement that. So we don't know if he's a good guy. Like even you could come back from date two, Junie, and be like, this is the greatest guy ever. And this must be my man. We don't know him. We've known him for three hours. Yeah. <laughs> And even if he got referred by a friend, you've known him for three hours, it's not a credible source yet. So what we need to do is make him go through the paces. One date a week for six weeks, for six dates. If he can be normal, text you a little bit, maybe a phone call, but getting you on one date a week for six dates, and each date's about an hour, hour and a half or so, not much longer, we're on the right track of this guy may have good intentions for you. And this is very important. We don't do a lot of lengthy phone calls in between. We don't do a ton of texting. Just live your life, go on one date a week, get to know them and see if they keep showing up. You know, I, I just wanted to say one of the things I love about you, Mike, through all these years that I've been studying with you and watching you is you just break it down into do this, do this, do this. And look what, look at the information you, you, you got and you, you break it down in. And I want to say in a simple way, cause it is, it's just do this. 
And yet it's so profound because you're going to get so much information over a six week journey. And if you're not committing to this huge phone calls and texting and having all those expectations, which is probably another uh, conversation to be had at some point, then you could really see or look for or experience some of the red flags that might be like in the second date or the fourth date. Huh, I didn't like how he treated that waitress. Not so cool. Or, huh, I, he was really passive aggressive when I said, hey, let's do this over the weekend and things got a little messy. Like, I just love how you you just laid it out for them. So what are some of the things that happens in those six dates other than like huge red flags that they should be looking for? Well, the the other big piece of this is when we talk about love, we've decided that emotions and our heart should be part of the decision-making process. And mm -hmm. I'd like to make an argument today. <laughs> okay, I get it. Uh -huh. I would like to make an argument that believe it or not, your heart and your emotion should have zero, zero to do with your decision on who you end up with. All right, we just lost half the audience. No, just kidding. Take a breath into that, ladies. Take a breath into that. Let's just keep going. Okay, Mike, tell us more. <laughs> yeah. So this is going to make everything easier, right? Because what we already have built in is women's intuition. And all the women that are on here, you're all smart. And when you, you know what a nice guy looks and feels like. Mm. Unless you have some weird trauma that you haven't, un that's still unhealed, then maybe you can't tell. But for women that have done the work, have healed, and now are showing up to dating, you know what a good guy looks like. You know how he talks to you and you know how he treats you. So there's going to be all these variables of emotion, of how you feel with this guy. Don't have sex. Don't let any of the chemicals get in there. Let's avoid emotion and let's just use empirical data. Does he show up for the six dates and then using my women's intuition, how does this feel? Does the date feel good? Are you having fun on it? Yes, I'm having fun. How does it feel in between dates? Do you feel anxious? Do you feel worried? Do you feel anything? No, I feel good. If you feel good on the date, in between the date, and this repeats for six dates plus, you're in good shape. And that's as simple as this needs to be. All right. That sounds really wonderful and simple. And as a woman who does have emotions <laughs> and, as we, <laughs> and as women who uh, really, you know, women love to connect. We're about opening. We're about diving in with our hearts. Uh, how do you navigate that? Because they're there. I mean, we can say, okay, push that aside, but you know, it's, it, my friends always laugh at me. <laughs> I'll go on a date or two and, and they'll say, what do you think? I'm like, oh, he's such a good hearted guy. And they're like, how do you know? How do you know? I'm like, I get it. You know, so, you know, I'm feeling what I'm, we'll get into the feelings, but I'm feeling what I'm feeling and I'm noticing things. And I have my own criteria of certain things that I can witness. Yeah, he's a good father. He, you know, he's got certain things going for him, but I don't know how he's going to be with me. So I can kind of put him in this, category of he's a good guy. I just don't know if he's my guy. However, when we start to spend time with people, we do get excited. You know, we get excited, we get hopeful, especially women that have been single for a really long time and are really yearning for that partner, which of course we need to keep that in check because we don't want to jump too fast because of our desires and yearning. However, we do get excited. So how do you can you speak to that? Like, how do you keep that in check? Because it does, aside from no sex, because I agree with you, once you have sex, those hormones, things are shifting, the dynamics change. But if you're not having sex, how do you stay present, enjoy the ride and not get hooked from your perspective? Yeah. So I get it. I've come back from so many second dates and been like, this is my wife. Right? So <laughs> I'm right there with you. So I just want to validate all the women's feelings. When you come back from a good second, third, fourth date, you can put your hands in the air and go like, wow, that was amazing. And I, this guy's so great. I want you to feel that. And I want you to sit in that emotion and let that like feel in all of your body. That's okay. Then once that subsides, I want you to go back to your brain and go, what did Mike say? I got to get on six dates. 
and then be like, all right, this is going well, mm -hmm. but let's just keep working the process. Let's get on our six dates. Let's get on our 10 dates. And let's see if I'm still feeling this way. Whenever I work with clients, they could, I, 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 this was awful, but the last two clients came back so excited on date two. Like, they're like, this must be my guy. And I'm like, whoa. whoa, whoa. <laughs> yeah. Just to be clear, like a guy does not hit my radar. So I want every woman watching this to be their own dating coach. When I have clients, a guy does not hit my radar till they get on date six. Because my job, and I'm the most successful coach at this in the, in the world, uh, putting people together, is to get people in loving relationships that never end. And I know that if I just keep throwing guys at my clients and finally one gets to six dates plus, we've got a real shot at that point. Anywhere before then, he could just be looking for sex. He could not be interested. He could ghost. He could disappear, whatever. This is when things really shift. And now we've got something that could really be a, a life partner. That's great. That's great. So one of the thoughts I had right now on this is you're starting to go out with somebody. They really like you too. And they want to start to get into intimacy. You know, you know, they, they, they're, they're wanting, they're desiring. Maybe you are too. Hopefully you are. Um, what if any conversation is to be had around the six date thing? I mean, I'm very transparent. So I'll probably say, something not about the six date Mike told me, but, but I, you know, well, my, Mike told me the other day, uh, but I, you know, I would say something like, you know, I like to get to know somebody and spend some time with them before I jump into this. Let's see how this goes. And I'm really enjoying our time. And what, what might you offer to a woman who's like, how do I do this without telling him I'm waiting to see if he's a good guy? Well, first of all, like we should tell him like, this is, we're doing candidacy for a boyfriend, candidacy for a husband, and we want a good boyfriend, we want a good husband. So we also need a good dater. And the first signs of a good dater is having open lines of communication. Absolutely. So I remember uh, with my partner Paige, at some point I was like, man, I really like to have sex with her. And even when I tried to kiss her, at some point, she's like, I'm not ready to be kissed. And at first, I felt very rejected. And I was like, I don't think this woman likes me. And Junie, I was like, maybe I shouldn't ask her on any more dates. Like, I don't think she's interested. I don't want to waste my time and or hers. Yeah. So what happened was we ended up talking. And she goes, Mike, I go to her. I'm like, am I wasting my time? Or like, do you like me? Or should we go yeah. out more? I just yeah. checked in. Right. And she said, I really like you. <laughs> but I'm doing this thing that's very different. It's very uncomfortable, but I'm trying to date so slow uh -huh. <laughs> because I always get this wrong. Yeah. And you know what I said to her? I'm like, great. I always get it wrong too. Mm. Let's go slow together. I love it. And let's keep talking through this. At some point again, I'm like, I want to have sex. And she's like, well, I'm not quite ready yet. So eventually I just really like kind of stopped throwing that offer out as best I could. I mean, I'm still a man and I still like to hunt, if you will. So I still, there's a little bit, but ultimately I stopped and really just started building a friendship with her. So it freed me up. And as a man, I actually really started to like it, Junie, because I didn't have to think about like, well, how do I make a move or what do I do? Or like, am I supposed to be having sex? Like, is this weird? And we literally became friends. And at some point the friendship was really great. And then we moved it on to the next step because we were both ready. I love it. That's so good. And it's funny uh, because I, I was, I'm was i dating consciously differently. And the, the huge differently part is the slower part. Uh, I've, I've always loved my libido. I've loved my intimacy, uh, you know, all the jazz. And by the way, ladies, you do whatever you want to do. There, you know, there, there are a lot of people that hop into bed and have long-term relationships. This is just another way of looking at it. And there's something really to be said about getting to know each other, but just wanted to put that out there. So anyway, I, I had a, a couple of dates with this really great guy. He was, he was a really great guy. And like I said, on paper, seemed like a really good guy. 
And I was committed to myself to go slowly and not jump into bed anytime soon. And so, you know, he was making the moves on me and, you know, I kind of hit the brakes and was like, I think we probably should have a conversation. And, you know, we had this conversation and then he, of course, because he had a great personality, he was like, lucky me that I'm catching you after your, your hop into bed phase. And now I've got to wait, you know, but he was also really respectful, which is a wonderful thing to also see that when you share vulnerably and transparently about how you want to date and you are interested and you are in it, and this is just kind of where you're at to see how the other person responds. Because if they're pushy, if they're not, if they're like crossing the boundaries and they're not really hearing you, that's, that is a red flag. And how are you going to feel around that? That's, you know, and that's one of the things you're talking about is how are we feeling in those six weeks with all the different interactions with this person? Um, anything else you want to add to that? Yeah. I mean, I want to get really clear on this too. So when a man has a bad reaction, like we, we, we make it like, oh, there's red flags or this guy like doesn't have emotional availability or, or something's wrong with him. I want to be clear. Most of the time, there's absolutely nothing wrong with this guy. He just doesn't like you enough to be patient, which is great news. We either want a guy to say, hey, I am crazy about you or hey, I'm not interested. If he's not interested, we can get rid of him and we can go find a guy that is interested. So yeah. all of this slowing down these boundaries, it gets us the result we want. A yes or a no. We don't want to be in maybe world where we're dating someone that's never yeah. going to go the distance. So if we're dating efficiently, let's tell him. And if he's like giving you problems about it, don't worry about why he's doing it. Who cares? Just get rid of him because something is not aligned. And it's not for you to figure that out. It's your job to just find a guy that wants to go at your speed. And as a guy, I will tell you, if I don't like a woman and she tells me I can't have sex, I'm going to be angry. I'm going to be irritable. I'm going to push back. If I like a woman, I'm like, oh, these are the rules of the game. Let's play. And just to be clear with my partner now, I was having so much freaking fun hanging out with her. I really didn't mm. care. Oh, we were so having good. a good conversation. We were smiling. We were laughing. We were having fun. We'll have sex when we have sex. But once again, the wrong woman, I would have been like, chop, chop, let's go. Yes, 100%. Yes. And that's the thing about this stage of life. You know, our time is precious. That's a commodity that once we spend that, it, we don't get it back. And to put the cards on the table, we don't want to live in maybe lands. And I love that. No maybe lands. So be you honor you. This is good stuff. One last question I'm curious about. What's your take on commitment? How do you know when a guy is really ready for commitment? I mean, I think everybody has also has a different definition of commitment. I mean, commitment can look like, okay, we're going to be solo. I mean, um, exclusive. Uh, that's a commitment or a commitment to, yes, we're in it for a long term and putting a ring on your finger. But to find the man that really is, yes, you're my girl, I'm 100% in, what, what's your take on that? How do you know? Yeah, I mean, the first piece is definitely checking in often. Um, hey, what do you want? Or what are you looking for? You could ask that on date one. I'm looking to find my committed partner. Great. Now, ladies, this is so important. Just because he gave you that answer and you're like, check that box <laughs> does not mean he cannot change his mind specifically in regards to you. He may have stone cold. I'm looking for my partner. And I want to be so clear about this. Men that are really looking for partnership still do not mind getting second prize and second prize. Like they're looking for love. They're looking for their life partner. Second prize of having sex is not a bad consolation prize. <laughs> so they may at some point switch over to the idea of like, you're not my life partner, but I don't mind getting second prize and having sex. Mm -hmm. So we have to constantly ask these men, well, what are you looking for with us right now? And you can check in weekly, bi-weekly, whatever you need to do, but this should constantly be coming up because it should be like, well, where are you at right now? How are you feeling in this partnership? 
because that's how we um, get in trouble is not asking that question again. And then we have sex thinking we're on the same page because on date one, he said he wanted commitment. Yeah. But now he's just like, ooh, consolation prize. I guess I'll get that. Bummer, yeah. I'm not, you know, life partnership, but at least I'll get to have sex. Oh my, yes. And that's the going through those six weeks or giving it some time to get to know each other, to have these revealing conversations. And that's why I do the work that I do, which is preparing the women on the inside to be able to have these conversations when they're dating uh, and um, and being and, and staying the course. Um, Let me get some it, metrics real quick. Yeah, yeah, mind. go ahead. Yeah, please. Sorry, I forgot the numbers. Go I'm for the guy. numbers. You're a numbers guy. I know. Go for it. Um, he needs to commit by 60 days. If you're seeing each other once a week for two months, so you're going on eight, nine, 10 dates. And probably at some point you start maybe seeing each other twice a week towards the end of that. He should know if he wants to partner with you at 60 days. I was if just going to ask this question, by the way. How perfect. Oh, yes. No, no. Hey, look, you're, you're, I, I was just like, at what point? <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like he knows, he knows if he just wants to focus on you. He's not saying like, hey, let's get married. Exclusivity doesn't need to be a big deal. It's just like, hey, I'm done trying to date all the people that exist over here. I'm just going to focus on you because I want to see where this heads. And at 60 days, we should know that. Like if you're going on, really, you've made it to like eight, 10 dates at that point. That's enough time. If he doesn't know yet, get rid of him. He does know. He's just going for second prize at this point. Exactly. Exactly. You know, and yeah, whether it's and whether it's second prize or he's just not really ready to commit to one person because grass is always greener and well you know i'm just not sure it's again the same answer is he is not choosing you he is not jumping in fully and how long and you know and then you're dating a potential we don't date potentials <laughs> we, we date people that really want to you know stand in the fire with us and and go the distance um one last one, question one, oh yeah go ahead I one thing yes sorry, please so no sorry. no no it's, it's all good let's keep going i just want to be clear to these ladies too yeah. If he hasn't like if he hasn't decided on you in eight weeks, he probably hasn't chosen himself mm. at this point. Because men, when we are in our most masculine, best version of ourselves, we move quickly, precisely. And so he hasn't chosen that his time is valuable, that he's worthy, that he's worth it. Because he's wasting his time. So he doesn't value himself yeah. when he is going on this many dates with a woman that he has no intention of partnering with or isn't sure about. He should be laser focused when he's really ready for commitment, really ready for partnership. He's going to know. And if he doesn't know, he's just not fully ready for dating. And it may have nothing to do with you. You're probably fantastic. So I don't want women to think like, oh, there's something wrong with me. Probably 95% of the time, there's absolutely nothing wrong with you. He's got his own crap that he hasn't yep. worked through because we know a lot of men are not doing the work. Yep. Don't worry about it. Just keep it moving until you find a guy that has done the work and is ready for you. Beautifully said. Absolutely beautifully said. Um, women, well, people in general are always worried about sabotaging relationships. And again, like I said, that's my work. I help them see their, their, their shadows, their crap, all the, 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 the conditioning that they, you know, the U-Haul of, of baggage that they bring to the next partner. And I help them empty it out. However, we do bring in our, on our carry-ons and have some of the things that are unhealed and that can throw things off. So what might you say to someone who's like, I got a good guy. I'm feeling really good. You know, check, 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 check. We've done the six, the six, eight dates. It feels really good. How do I not blow this up? How do I not sabotage this relationship? What would you say to that? Well, if we're capable of being ourselves, yes. which, you know, probably you're talking to Junie if you're having trouble doing that. But if you're capable of just being vulnerable, being yourself, you can't mess it up with the right person. So don't worry about it. Just be yourself and the right person is going to adore the crap out of you. If he doesn't adore you, it's not your person. Boom, Second boom, piece. boom. Yes. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Another piece. Um, sometimes we have some bad habits. 
and we can get anxious, we can get in our head, we can start overthinking. The way to avoid all this is we've really got to maintain our life and our support. And what I mean by that is your friends, your family, your job, your activities, your support system, whether it be whatever. So if something's coming up, you shouldn't be bringing it to him, at least initially. The first sounding board is probably your girlfriend, your sister, your mom, whoever, your cousin. Go get a sounding board so you can vent whatever is being filled and see if you're creating things that exist or if things are real. Mark, yes. Like, I know I do this. I create something about what happened on a date where I'm like, she's awful because of blah, blah, blah. But really, she's not. And I just misheard something. And now I've calmed down and I can go talk to her in a normal manner and just find out out of curiosity what the information is instead of accusing. I want to underline a couple of things there. One is step away, talk to someone else, take a breath before you jump in and then be curious because we make up stories. And again, the conditioning and all this is, it might seem so similar to past relationships, or you may not even be connecting the dots of past relationships. You just might be in reaction and the stories that you're making up. So taking that moment or two or three to come home to yourself, to ask yourself, is it really valid? Is this really true? Am I making up stories, reaching out, doing your inner work, and then saying, hey, can we have a conversation? Because that's how we have healthy relationships. So beautiful. Well said, Judy. (laughs) Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, This is amazing. As always, I friggin' love you. I love what you bring to the table. And I know you have an awesome gift called Men Over 40. Choose women based on these four feelings. And in parentheses, you write my best advice. Tell us a little bit more about that. We'll make sure it's in the show notes for you. I love this free video. Um, I pulled 2000 men asking them what four feelings they need to fall in love. And this took me a very long time to curate. Um, But I give you the information very quickly in like an eight, nine minute video. I just outline this is what men need to fall in love. And women love this. Men love this. I think this video now has I don't know, somewhere between three and 500,000 views. Like wow. people love it. It's very well liked. Um, it's very helpful. So go get your hands on that. And then once you click that, it'll um, add you to my email list and you can opt out if you don't want to be on it. Um, but after that, I give you an uh, amazing offer to talk to me um, for a discovery call if you're interested in coaching. Um, with me and my team, Uh, We've had, just working with me, an 83% success rate of taking single women, putting them in a relationship. Um, We focus on women over 50, really over 60. So if you're in that age demographic, that's exactly where we focus on. Um, We work with everybody, but we've been killing it at the over 60 market. It's amazing. Um, 83% success rate. When we add on my other coach, Helena Hart, we've had a 100% success rate in a six-month coaching program, putting a person into a relationship which is unheard of, obviously. So it always happens, 100% success rate. Um, It's a big investment. Um, I'm looking for women that like, this is their focus. Like how important is falling in love? 10 out of 10. If you're there, this is the right program. Um, We didn't talk about this at all, but I have uh, the most effective system uh, using online dating where you only need to meet six Two eight, not 68, 628 men to find someone you like. We do it uh, meeting one man a week for six to eight weeks and you get your guy and you only have to do online dating for one hour and a half a week, 30 minutes, three times a week. So not a big time commitment, but you gotta be all in on the process. And then we get a massive result for you. You get your partner and you are done. so please pretty, sign up for pretty, that. Pretty huge uh, statements there. That's that's amazing. Amazing. Beautiful, Mike. So we'll we'll make sure that all your information on how to find you and certainly the um the video that you shared 
uh, for them. It'll all be in the show notes. And like I said, ladies, I've known Mike for years. So definitely check out what he has to offer. I'm sure you're going to be chomping at the bit at this point because you've heard him through this podcast and how special he is. Mike, such a pleasure. My goodness, such a pleasure. I miss you. Virtual hugs to you. And I'm so glad we had some time today. Yes, hugs, hugs, hugs. <laughs> yeah, so great to see you. And thank you so much for having me. And ladies, like, look at Junie. Like, look at all her compliments and look how good she makes me feel. And look at her feminine energy. Like, she's such, this is why men adore her is because of who she is. So, it's, you know, you emulate, emulate Junie and guys are going to, be coming towards you. Well, I'm going to add on that. First of all, let me just say thank you. That's that's so sweet and so wonderful. And what am I doing, ladies? I'm being me. I'm being me. I'm radiating my truth, my light, and I'm comfortable in who I am. That's being Junie, is being you. <laughs> so be you, shine your light. And if you're having a hard time with shining your light, come to me and then you could go to Mike and then look out world. Here you come. All right, Mike. Thank you so much. That's our episode for today. Um, I have no words other than deep gratitude until we meet again. <laughs> One more thing before you go, have you taken my discover your love avatar quiz? It's a two minute quiz that can help you not only know your strengths, your, your superpower, because you have one. Also identify some of your blind spots, some of the things that might be having you in your fear, having you behaving in ways that aren't in alignment with your highest self, the way you want to be when it comes to dating and relationships. And it'll also help you discover why maybe the stars haven't lined up for you yet. Bottom line is, you take this two minute quiz, you get a full report in your email with details on how to move forward in next level love, whether you want a partner or not. So you can go to midlifeloveoutloud.com slash love quiz. The link is in the show no notes as well. And if you haven't liked and subscribed to the station, I'm going to encourage you to do that too. So you don't miss any episodes. And I hope you got a ton out of today's. See you next week. Mwah.